Greetings, this is Dr. Lori Ernstberger. Welcome to Behavioral Training Resource Center and my how-to series for teaching tips in the classroom. And today's topic is how to prevent avoidance behaviors. And we've all seen avoidance behaviors in the classroom. It's very common, not only for students with special needs, but typical developing students as well. They complain about the work when you give an assignment. They're slow to get out materials and get started or maybe they make negative comments about themselves to avoid the work. So I'm stupid, or this is too hard, I can't do it. All of these avoidance behaviors really interfere with student outcomes. Now I wanna make sure that we understand the difference between avoidance behaviors and escape behaviors. Because escape behaviors occur after the initial task has started. So once the assignment or the task has begun, then if the student exhibits misbehavior or interfering behaviors, we would call those escape behaviors. Avoidance behaviors is before the initial task has begun. So we're talking about how to prevent that initial avoidance behaviors. What can you do? I'm gonna give you a few teaching tips that you'll be able to use immediately tomorrow in class that are gonna be effective. The first thing I want you to think about is choice making. If you have a student who exhibits avoidance behaviors, give them a choice of how they wanna get started. So making sure that you have two activities or three activities to choose from and give them a choice, where do they wanna start? So do they wanna write in their notebook first? Do they wanna do a, a, a worksheet first? So giving choice make it, making, number one, it is a lifelong skill. And so we wanna be teaching choice making every day to all of our students, particularly students with special needs and we want to reinforce that behavior. So if you want to get a student started on work, instead of saying, okay, you need to pick up your book and start on page 50, if we want to prevent those avoidance behaviors, think about some choice making. The other thing is you can create a simple checklist of how to get started. So how to get started on Dr. Lori's assignment or how to get started in class today. And this could be a simple checklist that you print out for the student or write on the whiteboard of just some very basic steps of what you want them to do. So what materials do you want them to get out, the textbook you need, um, to write their name in their uh, assignment journal or write today's date on their paper, but write it out specifically as a checklist because these really simple steps will help get the student started, build that momentum, and then you're avoiding uh, some of those interfering behaviors that might begin at the, at the transition of the classroom. The other tip I wanna give you, you can do this tomorrow, is be clear with your instructions. So if I'm in a classroom, I'm always listening, what is the teacher exactly saying to the student? And oftentimes the teacher's talking too much and the instructions are vague, like let's get busy, come on guys, get to work, and those things are too vague. I'm not sure what they mean by that. So one of the things you can do to help students get started is to give a clear instruction and it's gotta be concrete. What do you want them to do specifically? Make sure that you are, mean what you say, I love this quote, mean what you say, say what you mean, and in 15 words or less. Now my last tip that we all need to be remindful of when we're teaching in classrooms is we need to create that student engagement right from the beginning. If we allow a lot of chatter at downtime at the beginning transition, we really tend to lose that momentum. We lose, we lose student engagement. So we want to have an opening activity that's going to start with a bang, right? Something that's going to catch the students attention right from the beginning. So is it a poem? Is it a song? Some kind of multimedia, a PowerPoint slide that has some video attached to it. Something that really is going to bring all the students together. Maybe it's a choral response to something, a quote that you've written on the board and we're going to read it together. Whatever it is, start with that high energy engagement right from the very beginning and then you're going to get over that hump and then we're gonna keep that momentum going for the rest of the lesson. So to prevent avoidance behaviors, think about choice making, write a checklist, brush up on your instructions so they're clear and concise, and bring a bang to the beginning of class so you start students out right from the very beginning. 
Now, if you want to learn about more about this, there's lots of activities right online for student engagement. So you can Google that or just contact me, Dr. Lori Ernstberger at drlori at cox.net. Or you can go to my website at Behavioral Training Resource Center and happy to provide you more information on this topic and so much more. Thank you so much and happy teaching.